Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're going to be solving a Physics 7B fluid transport practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be solving. Now this problem has a part A and a part B. So I'm just showing you part A on the screen. And then as we move to part B, I'll put part B on the screen as well. So part A goes as follows. So a part of a fluid system is depicted here. The water is flowing to the right. The fluid columns are marked A, B, and C, and they are places in three locations giving pressure gauge measurements. All of these columns are open to the atmosphere. There is a height difference only between one and two. There is no resistance between points one and two, but there is a resistance between two and three. The area of the pipe is four centimeters square and is constant throughout the pipe. Now, the first question on part A is, a seventh student observes the water levels in the three columns. She notes that the measurements for each column are either three or four tick marks. Uh, mark the columns with their appropriate values, show your work and explain your answer. Okay, so as you can see, I have everything written down here. So I have the drawing. There is no resistance here, but there is a height difference. There is a resistance here, but no height difference. The area is just gonna, it's just the same throughout the pipes. And the, the thing here is that these water uh, levels can either be three or four, and we need to figure out if it's either three or four. So this is basically one of those exercises in which what we have to do is basically compare water columns and then just figure out how to, you know, if whichever is greater then that's for tick marks and whichever is the um, smallest in this case would be three tick marks since it can only be three or four. Um, so let's just get started. Now, obviously, you can start comparing wherever two points you want, but I think that, you know, I'm just going to start with one and two. Why not? So, as usual, these comparison exercises are basically use the Bernoulli equation, then figure out whether delta P is positive, negative, or zero. So, let's just go ahead and start from one to two. So, I'm going to use my Bernoulli equation from one to two. Um, this is delta P start at 1 and at 2 is equal to, there is no change in area, so there is no kinetic energy term. Um, there is a change in height, so I have to put that in. So that is rho G delta Y. Uh, there is no resistance uh, from 1 to 2, so that is equal to 0, and there is also no pump from 1 to 2, so that is also equal to 0. So this will be the equation that we're working with. Now, uh, so this is the equation that we're working with, and now we need to figure out whether this guy is plus or minus by figuring out whether this other guy is plus or minus. Now, if we're looking at the potential energy term, we know that this guy is actually negative because when we go from height to two, we actually have a decrease in height, which means that delta y decreases as you move from one to two, and that makes this number negative. Now, because this number plus this number have to cancel out, the only way to cancel out a um, negative number would be a positive number. So this, has, this guy has to be a plus, so this minus cancel each other out. Now, delta P from one to two is a positive number, and it is also P2 minus P1. So if two minus one is equal to a positive, this basically means that the pressure at two is higher than the pressure at one. Now this is higher than this, and because this can only be either three or four tick marks, then this means that two is at four tick marks. So one, two, three, four, and that one then has to be at three tick marks because that's our only other option. One, two, three. Now, uh, at this point, we have figured out one and two, but we don't have enough information to figure out uh, three. 
We haven't used, oh my God, this cat. Um, so we didn't do anything relating uh, any of these pressures to three. So three can still be either four or three. So we just need to use our Bernoulli equation again. Uh, and my suggestion is to just do it from two to three. If they are equal, then it's four. If this one is smaller, then it's three. So let's just do that Bernoulli equation starting at two, ending at three. So this is delta P start at two, end at three. There is no change in area and there is no change in height going from two to three. So the kinetic energy term and the potential energy term are not gonna show up here. However, we do have a resistance, so this is negative IR. Oh, and also we don't have a pump, so that doesn't really show up here as well. Now, uh, this term over here is negative because I is positive, because you're going with the flow, and R is always going to be positive by definition. So two positive numbers multiplied by negative, that means that the entire thing is negative. So this is, you know, in combination with the negative sign that comes by definition is negative. Um, this being negative means that this is negative. So delta P from two to three, which is equal to final minus initial, which means three minus two is negative. So this means that two is greater than three. And if two is four tick marks and we can only have either four or three tick marks and this one is smaller, then that means that this has to be three tick marks. One, two, three. And that would be the final answer. Three tick marks, four tick marks, three tick marks. So now let's go ahead and read question two. So the flow rate at position two is given by, um, let me just write that down. So the flow rate is given by I2 is equal to three meter cube seconds. The resistance, be the resistance R between points two and three is um, 2,000 Joule seconds, meters to the sixth. Calculate the height difference between points one and two. Show your work. Okay. Um, so now we're given some actual numbers. We are given this I over here because even though they uh, decided to call it the current flowing through two, well, this is just one pipe, right? So whatever is flowing through here in the middle has to come from somewhere and it has to end up somewhere. So really what they gave me wasn't just I2, they just gave me the current period. Uh, so they gave me this number and they also gave me this number. And what I have to figure out is, um, you know, the height difference, this height difference from one to two. So the way in which we can do this is um, pretty much by using our Bernoulli equation again. So you can combine these equations and that is going to work. I think that the easiest way to go about it, even though it seems counterintuitive, is to just use a Bernoulli equation again. Uh, and I'm gonna do a Bernoulli equation starting at one and ending at three. Why am I choosing these two points uh, specifically? Well, because uh, the pressure at one is equal to three tick marks and the pressure at three is also equal to three tick marks. So if I use my Bernoulli equation, my delta P from one to three is equal to zero because I went from three tick marks to three tick marks. So that, so that is, you know, that is a thing that I don't have to worry about, like, oh, how am I gonna get delta P? It's equal to zero. Um, so, so that is nice. So, if I go from one to three, I do have a height dif delta P is equal to zero. I do have a height difference, so I do have rho g change in y. I don't have a change in area, so there is no kinetic energy term. And I do have a resistance, which is just this chunk right here. So this is equal to E pump. Um, no, why? No, this is equal to negative IR. Um, yeah, there is no pump. Um, 
Yeah, so I can just basically solve for delta y. Delta y is equal to negative ir divided by rho times g. So this is equal to negative i is equal to 3. r is equal to 2,000. Rho is equal to 1,000 because this is water. Gravity is equal to 10. So delta y is, um, let's see, 3. 2,000 divided by 10,000, zero point, negative 0 0.6, because I have a negative sign over here, meters, final answer. Does it make sense that I get a negative answer? Well, actually, yes, it does make sense, because when I go from 1 to 3, uh, my height goes from high to low, which you know, I would I would actually be very surprised if I got an, a positive answer because I went from high to low. So delta y is just you know the height difference is zero point six meters. Final answer. So now let's just go ahead and move to part B um, of this problem. I'm gonna put it on the screen. So part B basically says in a new scenario the water is flowing to the left. The resistance between points 1 and 2 is now the same value r as the resistance between points 2 and 3. The flow rate, height difference, the value of the resistance r and the area of the pipe is exactly the same as in question 1. The measurement of column C is 4 tick marks as shown. Mark the levels in the remaining fluid columns. Show your work and explain your answer. Okay. So now we're working with the same system, except now we also have a resistance here and now water is going from right to left. Uh, these changes are sufficient that, you know, everything that we did for part B, pretty much we have to throw away. Because uh, first of all, the water is going on the opposite direction and second of all, now we have a resistance over here. Uh, so basically we have to uh, do a, the little comparison game again. We have to figure out which one is greater and then we just have to put some tick marks here on the picture. So let's just go ahead and do that. Since now water is going from right to left, I'm going to compare uh, 3 with 2 by going from 3 to 2. So I'm going to use my Bernoulli equation, start at 3, end at 2. So this will be change in pressure start at 3 and at 2. There is no height difference from 3 to 2. And there is also no change in area from uh, 3 to 2. So there is no kinetic energy term or potential energy term. There is no pump, so we only have a resistance. So this is just negative IR, like this. Now, these two are always, uh, this is positive because I'm going in the same direction as the flow, so this is positive. This R is always positive by definition. Both of them multiplied times this negative sign that shows up on the Bernoulli equation will give you a negative sign over here. And because this is the only thing on the right side of the equation, and this is the only thing on the left side of the equation, delta P has to be negative as well. So delta P from 3 to 2, which is also equal to final minus initial, so 2 minus 3 is equal to a negative number. Now, um, because it's equal to a negative number, then this means that 3 is higher. So 3 is higher than 2. Now, uh, so this has to be, you know, a lesser amount of water over here in the column, like a lesser height than this one. So now let's just go ahead and compare 2 to 1, and let's see where that takes us. You know, this comparison things is just throw, just do a bunch of points and compare them to each other. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm, I'm choosing to go from 2 to 1, just so that I can still go with the flow. So let's see. If I go from 2 to 1, then this is change in pressure, start at 2, go to 1. I do have a change in height, so I do have rho g delta y. Um, I don't have a change in area, and I don't have a bump, so this is equal to negative ir. 
let's see. Um, this chunk right here is the exact same magnitude as this over here because the R's are the same. And I already, you know, explained why this is a negative as a whole. Now, when I go from um, two to one, I'm actually gaining some height, which makes this a positive number. So this is actually a positive number like this because I decided to start at two and go at one, which means that I gained some height. So this is positive. Um, and this makes it so that delta P has to be negative, right? Because a positive number plus a positive number is never gonna give you a negative number. The only way that you're gonna get a negative number would be if this is minus. Because you have a negative number plus some positive, well, if this is greater, you can still have a negative. So yes, this has to be a negative number. So delta P from two to one is um, negative and it is also final minus initial, so one minus two. So this means that two is higher than one. So we're gonna have a drop over here and then we're gonna have a second drop over here. Um, so let's just... Um, for the purposes of this quiz, I'm pretty sure that it was only that it was okay so long as this was lower than this and this was lower than this. So if this is four, you could say that this is three and that this is just two and that that makes it so that so that this is fine, right? Um, because one has to be the smallest one. Um, now, how do I know that this is exactly one thick mark? Well, this wasn't um, a requirement to get full credit, but the reason why I know that this drop has to be equal to one thick mark is because the problem states that I and R stay exactly the same. So this number right here, we know from the first problem that IR is exactly one thick mark of difference. So by getting this, you're basically saying that, you know, the drop is one thick mark as well, because instructions say the flow is not changing, R is not changing. So that is how I know um, as a fact that this just has to be one thick mark of difference. Now I know that this has to be an extra thick mark of difference from over here uh, because I know that IR is one thick mark and I know that this guy over here is also uh, one thick mark of difference from this part over here. So that is basically how I know how to drop my thick marks. Uh, but honestly, this was not required to get full credit. So long as these two were uh, figured out correctly and you had lowest, medium and highest and everything was uh, everything was going to be fine. But that is, I just wanted to explain how I'm dropping by tick marks and how I know that it's supposed to be just one tick mark. Uh, so anyways, I hope that you guys found this video useful. Uh, please leave a like and uh, if you did and if you have any questions, just uh, make sure to leave a comment. Uh, we do appreciate your feedback at the end of the day. This is, uh, you know, meant to help people out. So if you feel like there's anything that we could do, just let us know. I'll see you guys in the next video.